Hi there and welcome to the UXF channel and welcome to this tutorial video for the play along videos of Wellerman by Nathan Evans. This song has gone crazy on TikTok, a sea shanty, and it is a joy to be able to bring it to you. Just remember this is a play along video and a tutorial for a play along video. There is no ukulele in the original version. Every now and then there's a comment on YouTube about the fact of I didn't hear any ukulele on there. Well, yeah, that's right, because it's a play along to an existing song. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at the chords need for G, C, E, A ukulele. There's a couple options here for you today. Baritone D, G, B ukulele, and then we'll talk about some strumming ideas for people that need some strumming ideas. I just want to remind you that you can skip ahead to those parts of the video by using the chapters below, either by sliding across and looking at the description that pops up or looking at the description below. And there's all sorts of other good information in the description if you want to read through that as well. And if you like the chords for the song, you can find what we'd call the chord chart or the tabs for the song at ukutabs.com. Ukutabs is a collaborator with this channel. All right, let's look at the chords you need for GCA ukulele. First of all, in the key of D minor, I will be using my Flight Diana Concert ukulele. It has a cedar top, and then it has a walnut back and sides. A beautiful and beautiful sounding instrument. All right, the first chord you need is the D minor chord. Then you'll need the G minor chord. Then you'll need the A chord. And really, the one hard chord for uh, GCA ukulele, which is B flat. So what you'll want to do is put your first finger across strings one and two, right above the middle fret. Then put on the second and third fingers. Ultimately, when I'm making that bar chord, I'm only supporting with my thumb and I'm pulling against the fretboard so that most of the strength is going down into the fretboard rather than from my thumb up, if that makes sense. And then that allows the other two fingers to make a nice clear sound. And then the final chord is the F chord. And those are the chords you need to play Wellerman in D minor. Now, I understand that B flat is a tricky chord for a lot of players, and especially for schools with students. So in that case, you can actually use a capo and play along with the song in its original key of C minor. So what I'm going to do is take a capo, I'm going to put it on my third fret, right above the third fret specifically. Make sure it's across all four strings. But then I'm going to retune my instrument since I know that I have that capo on there. Because ultimately what the capo will do is pull things a little bit out of tune and not make it quite right. I'm often asked about this as a teacher. I love this tool. It's the Jawum Smart Tuner, the T2. I'm not paid to talk about it, but it is a wonderful tool and it allows me to tune 25 ukuleles in about 10 minutes at school. And with my ukuleles at home, I love to use it too. There is a Rhodey product that's very similar to this. Uh, this one is my favorite, both for size, battery power, and the functionality of not having to switch and press buttons between tunings. Now, I have two versions of this song using a capo. One has an E7, which is easier to play, and one has an E. So let's take a look at the chords you need for each of those. So for the version with E7, here are the chords you need. The first one is the A minor chord. So it's as if I'm playing A minor, but this is now the nut. So second finger goes on what is now the four string second fret. Then the D minor. Then the E7 chord. The F chord. And the C chord. And those are the chords you need to play Wellerman with the capo in the original key of C minor with the E7 chord. Now, if you're up for a challenge, you can also do it with the E chord instead of the E7 chord, which I think sounds better and more right with this song. It's a matter of opinion. The E7 works. I think the E is better. So the same situation, we've got a capo across the third fret or right above the third fret. 
and I've retuned the instrument so that it's in tune with the capo on, so it's going to be playing with the capo for a while. And then I'm going to pretend that this is the new nut and that my instrument starts here. And I'm going to play the same chord shapes as shown in the, in the video. Now, ultimately, these are not these chords. They're actually up a minor third. But for now, just use the capo and think of them as these chords. So the first one is A minor chord. Then the D minor chord. Now, the next chord is the E chord. And there are a couple different ways to play the E chord. What I'm going to do when I'm playing it is I'm going to put my first finger on the first string, second fret, under our capo, and then cover strings four, three, and two with a bent third ring finger. That's how I'm going to play the E chord, like that. There are other ways to play that E chord. You can play one, four, oh, two, and that's kind of a weird position to play. So looking at the look closer, first finger goes on the fourth string, first fret, second finger goes on the first string, second fret, and then the pinky or the third finger goes on the third string, fourth fret. Works pretty well this high up the neck. And then of course, there's another way to play E all together if you want to shift completely, which is to do a bar chord, barring the fourth fret all the way across. Again, we're talking fourth fret underneath the capo here, and then adding with the pinky on the seventh fret. Basically playing a C chord up four frets. Those are the four ways you can play E. Generally for me, this one is going to be easiest to do with that first finger on the first string, second fret, and then the third finger covering strings fourth string two at the fourth fret. That's what works best for me, but you might find something different. The F chord and the C chord. All right, now let's look at the chords you need for baritone DGBE ukulele. I'll be using this instrument. It's the Flight NUB 310. And just as a note, as of early 2021, this one is still being sold with GCEA tuning. If you want to tune it DGBE, um, you'll have to buy baritone strings and put them on like I did. I'm running Living Water fluorocarbon strings on it, which I really like the sound of with this instrument. Okay, the first chord is the D minor chord. Then the G minor chord. Then the A chord. Then the B flat chord. And for me, what I'm doing is I'm putting my first finger on the first string, first fret, second finger on the third string, third fret, and third finger on the second string, third fret. And then the final chord is the F chord, which is a partial bar chord. You're going to put your first finger across strings one and two right above the first fret, and you're going to pull against the fretboard. You're going to put that energy into the fretboard and then lightly support with your thumb. That'll give you this sound. Nice clear ringing on that top string because it's stopped with that first fret. And then add fingers one and two. And that's your F chord. And those are the chords you need for Wellerman on DGBE baritone ukulele. All right, now let me give you some strumming ideas. Remember, there was no ukulele or even instruments in the original, so what you do is really up to you. There is no right answer. I simply provide these strumming patterns as an option for people that can't come up with strumming patterns on their own or would like to hear what I'm saying and then just add to it. So the first thing you can do is just simply play down strums. And I'll play through this little pattern of the verse. Okay, so just down strums works very good. And if you listen to the original recording, there's just simply a thump all the way through the song and the voices carry both the melody and the harmony. So that is one way to think about it, is just down strums. Down, 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 down. Now, on a related note, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, with a stress on each down, which happens naturally, would also work pretty well. Here it comes. Try it one more time. Mm -hmm. 
that works as well. Now, one final strumming pattern you might want to do is this. It requires a little bit more of the wrist action. Now, before we get into this, be playing where the neck meets the body, right here where the neck meets the body. That's where you need to be playing. Just saw a review on God and Ukulele of a, a Nui Nui, an entry level instrument, and they put a pick guard right here, and that's just brilliant because that's where you should be strumming your ukulele. It's not a guitar, you don't play over the sound hole unless you're picking. Now, can you strum anywhere else on the instrument if you want to? The answer is absolutely yes, but you're gonna get the best sound right here and your fingers also won't get caught in the sound hole as I see what happens to my students all the time. Now, with this, I'm gonna be pointing at me and pointing at the floor and all the action is gonna be in my wrist as I do this. And I'm gonna be going like this, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. But to get the speed of the song, one, two, three, four. That is what you'd have to do, is just make sure that you're really loose. And that sounds really good with the song too. So any one of those three submarine patterns will work quite well. Now, what about the chorus? Does the chorus work for these two? Sure, let's do the one with just the down strums. And for some reason, I keep hearing the Game of Thrones melody as I play this. I don't know why. I have not done a mashup yet between that and this song, but that's what the chord progressions make me think of. Now, how about down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up? Or how about the third one? Down, down, up, down, up, down. One, two, ready, go. I think any one of those three would work really well for the whole song or you can switch it up. I also, on my arrangement of it, didn't have anybody play on the first verse along with the melody. So those chords, those options, the option with the capo if you'd like to, and those strumming patterns will get you through Wallerman. All right, thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you're having a great day and I'll be back soon with some more Uke stuff for you.